Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. Hello, hello, hello. I brought Daniel. Hey, everyone. Howdy, Daniel. Can I get somebody to talk just so I can test my audio? Test, test. Hi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, great, let me um, let's wait one more minute and then we can get started. But this is probably all the people that will be showing up. Make it the agenda. I'm doing that thing where people narrate when they're leading a call. So don't have it's anything lovely. else. It's fantastic. It's like I'm there with you. Yeah. <laughs> also, I apologize in advance for uh, bad audio quality on the uh, cafe in Paris. How is Paris? Is it so hot as everyone complains about? Yeah, we melt we melted a bit uh, two days ago, but uh, today's today's not too bad. Conference vibes definitely shifting. I feel like in a post uh, DevConnect world, there's like now technical conferences and not technical conferences, and this feels like it's it's straddling the line, but it's biasing towards not technical, at least in comparison to previous years. So that's been interesting. You mean it's hype? Yeah, there's just more more hype, and like the real work gets done more and more inside events. Like the 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 the, the people I want to talk to aren't even bothering to attend the conference or don't even have tickets. Yeah, I heard the tickets were like extremely expensive this year. Yeah, and super limited. That's frustrating. All right. Um, I think we can get started. There are some new people on the call. Do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, so to start, this is the KZG ceremony call we're building. Uh, we're crafting the trusted setup implementation and the coordinator software that's going to make KZG Trusted Setup possible, which will provide a foundation for um, dank sharding, proto dank sharding sometime next year. Um, so we're, we're getting started early on this in advance of when we'll need it. Um, yeah, it, I see there are two new names. Do you wanna just give a quick intro to who you are and what your interest is for the project? Okay, so hi, I'm Daniel. Uh, some of you already know me from ETH Break, where I implemented together with Marius um, our small prototype of the um, specifications provided by Carl. And I'm here to catch back up with everything that's been happening in the meantime. Yeah. Great. Welcome. Glad to have you. Alexei, are you able to? Yeah, hello guys. I'm from Nethermind, uh, pro developer. Uh, I'm here due to some interesting points in agenda. Uh, I like to uh, follow uh, other clients' updates, so maybe it, it, uh, it is what I want. I don't know. Uh, it's like a first time I'm here. Great. So you're just here to learn and, and see what it's all about. You're more than welcome to listen in. Yep. All right, why don't we get started with just general updates from the last two weeks, what people worked on, uh, general state of things, any major updates, Carl? Let's start with you. 
Uh, sure. Um, on my side, it's mostly been more worrying about uh, things like how do the attestations work? Uh, what does that look like? Uh, I don't know if I've discussed on these polls before the idea of sort of linking the attestation back, like double linking it. Um, and then also worrying a little bit about simplifying the API uh, for participants who don't want to implement the, the full API. I sent some messages about that. Um, and that's that's mostly what I've been thinking about slash working working on. But uh, I guess those are less updatey things and more researchy things we can discuss later. Sure, yeah. And I realized we forgot to give <clears throat> Guillaume space to intro himself. So Guillaume, why don't you just jump in and intro? Um, yeah, hi, I'm Guillaume, uh, core dev at uh, the, in the Go Ethereum team. Um, I'm interested in uh, potentially writing a Zig implementation because uh, I figured Wasm would be a nice target. So I'm mostly here to figure out if uh, Daniel is going to proceed with his Rust implementation. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, roughly uh, my goal and interests. Awesome. Is this going to be just for you, or are you going to, you know, do the implementation with a group and and run a bespoke ceremony with the group, or is it just you? Uh, yeah. Assuming uh, there's no uh, was an implementation, I would do that. Uh, I mean, with a group. It's, it's just myself. Yeah, but it, I would I would be interested in joining if uh, if I write the software. Got it. Cool. Uh, Jeff, did you have any update on things you've been working on? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, yes. Uh, so I've um, progressed the API specs to some extent. Got some feedback from Carl. Um, we um, did release. A, Ask for more um, contributions on our test site, and that raised a few issues that we have to solve. Like it doesn't work in Firefox, and it doesn't seem to work very well in Mac. Um, uh, what else? I have a developer started a couple of days ago who's helping. Who's going to be helping out? And for the time being, he's just catching up on the tool set we're using and that kind of thing. He's got a lot to learn. So um, yeah, that's what's been going on. Is he uh, or she, this developer, are they uh, part of the PSE team or did you hire them yes. as a contractor for this? Okay, cool. He, he's, well, he's, a, he's doing a, a, yeah, like a three month, uh, trial period i guess but uh, yeah he's basically on on the on the psc team um assuming all goes well yeah great that's good to hear um you mentioned it briefly but do you want to talk more about the test test site i did try to do it myself um chrome on windows but i think it never actually went through um, is this something that you want to get more people to test or is this small group enough? Um, yeah, we've only had a, a, a few, a few trials, successful trials. So yeah, I think this, the system is a bit clunky. Like if someone's contribution fails, it doesn't, I haven't got all the bits and pieces in to recover from that. Um, so a normal contribution would would just be ready to accept the next one, but I haven't got the fail safes in there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a bit clunky. I've got from those who have contributed, we've got maybe uh, you know six or eight or ten valid contrib contributions, which give, gives us an idea of the range of of um, yeah, of of what the performance is going to be, and and importantly, we we've hit a few of those those configurations that don't work that we know we need to work on. 
friend, you mentioned that you were unable to participate in this or that your participation failed. Do you have more info on what happened there? Uh, nothing beyond it, just kind of, I think it's, I don't remember the terminology. It just said it was basically, it's, it seemed like it was always stuck in the, the startup phase or maybe that was doing the computation and it for some reason never uh, concluded or at least as long as I kept checking it, it never concluded. Uh, but I can try, I can try it again. So there's, I, I encountered a similar thing like this and had to had to refresh um, on one of, one of my, my runs. So I got through the queue, got to the front of the queue and then there was sort of a like preparing or something yeah. phase. Uh, before I could die, before I'd even downloaded the the transcript, and it just never got through that. Okay. And then I refreshed, and it instantly downloaded because I was still front of queue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Um, yeah. yeah there's, so. there's generally not going to be a queue, and refreshing would always, should, yeah, should always just pick up from and try again. Okay. Um, I the the the. the Logs weren't particularly helpful, and the networking looks like okay. I was happy that the networking wasn't helpful either in terms of seeing what went wrong. So I don't actually know what the failure case was, but I think I could just look back to, to Trent. Okay. Um, Jeff, can you? Okay. So does this represent sort of the latest state of things, the 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 test site? Um, how far off is this going to be from the final implementation? Oh, um, so the final implementation, um, there'll be a lot of different stuff behind the scenes. There'll be the API that's got to be built. Um, the, the actual user experience, probably not all that different. Yeah, yeah, all the, most of the work's behind the scenes and and clearing up those, you know, if, if we're getting error cases, then we have to clear all those up so that we get, um, well, uh, yeah, we get all those edge cases cleaned up. Um, do you have a link to the code for that website? Code for the website? Yeah, I think those links are in the Telegram channel. Um, both the, the test site itself and the, the code. Let me, uh, drop, oh, uh, let me drop it in there anyway. So one of the other things I saw when I was uh, sort of playing around your thing here, Jeff, is that it talked about um, a, a PTAL file, which is the, the standard used by some other ceremonies. Um, is that just yeah. what console, console log is saying, or are they actually stuff being converted in and out of the PTAL format behind the scenes? Um, it's, it's just using that, uh, well, no, it's just, it's not even, it, it's just using a file that happens to end in PTAR because that's what the previous implementation was using. Um, and it's not using your, your um, format. It's just, it's the, for, it, the data is the original version of Kev's code. So it's just a bunch of bytes. There's no JSON structure. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I see. And then you're just calling that 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 byte construction a ptal, despite not being the same thing as the other ptals that exist, and also not the JSON. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. right. Um, so then there, there aren't any major. I mean, the the, the reason I mentioned it, there aren't any major sort of um, computation time or speed differences between that in the JSON modulo, the JSON encoding. It's not like we're re-encoding into a weird format um, and back That's or something right. like that. We won't have that much 
that won't have too much Im impact on the performance at all. Okay. Cool. So it seems like the goal will be to just keep iterating on this, finding the edge cases in various combinations of whatever OS they're running and hardware and just keep ironing those out. Yeah. Nice. Is it too early to talk about how long it's taking um, in the average case? Or do we oh, have uh, no, um, we have seen five second and 10 second contributions. Um, they, uh, I'm guessing that's, the typical one is going to be about 10 seconds. I mean, that's, that's great. That's much better than my experience of uh, in not starting. So I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. oh, yeah. One interesting point on that, though, is, I mean, Carl asked for um, what, what's the typical range of, of, times we see from previous ceremonies. So I did some analysis on that. The comments are in that uh, document where Carl was asking the questions, but um, there is a, a very large range. It's a very long tail. Like a lot of people have, have a reasonably short contribution time, but you can go up to 10 times that time and you're still getting the last 5% or 10% of the of the distribution. Interesting. So it's both long tail and fat tail, the, the distribution. Yeah. Huh. Okay, this is some implications in terms of, of how we set time marks. Yeah. If our, if our average is say 15 seconds and we need whatever, 150 seconds, and even that might not be enough to capture, capture everyone. Um, based on I mean, I assume you don't have numbers for this, so just based on your intuition, do you think this is due to people using uh, their own slash different implementations or is this a hardware thing? Yeah, this was all in a, in a single implementation. So it's purely the hardware or whatever platform factors come into it. Um, I did a separate analysis for you know, internet times, upload, download, so that's, that's excluded. Uh, it's all, it's pretty much just the hardware variations. Yikes, okay, um, that's interesting. Um, and is this, is, is this running um, Wasm in the browser? It's what? It's is this Wasm, Wasm, Wasm in the browser? In the browser. Okay. Yes. Because hmm. I, I, I feel like a 10X, a 10X spectrum over hardware is, is kind of surprising, but maybe not over wasn't implementations between different browsers or something. Yeah. Multi-threading makes a big difference. If um, uh, some hardware will allow four threads, some will eight, some more. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I did. What's, what I'll do the, is try and link the, the, the statistics. I'll drop a link to it. What's, what's the verification time on the server like? Yeah, we, we haven't got that set up at the moment. I'm expecting it to be just three seconds or something. Is that fair? Yeah, I would almost expect less than that. It should be yeah. it should be blazingly fast on the server side. Um, the, the the big difference between what you your implementation, Maris, and this is that you can uh, you can batch the pairing, so it's only one pairing. There's one one pairing in total plus one multiplication per point. So one one multiplication, one addition per point. Um, so it'll be very cheap. Yeah, makes sense. And uh, the verification is done in, in Rust with uh, 
um, Kev's implementation, right? Uh, that's that's the plan, yeah. Marius, do you need, uh, are, are you guys going to try implement the, the verification as well? As in, would it be helpful for, like, do, do you know how to do the, the batch verification there? Would it be helpful to have a doc explaining that to you guys? That would be great. Um, yeah, we, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put something together for you guys. Oh, thank you. Anything else on the test, trusted setup test site? Okay, I guess we've covered it all. Oh, well, I see the Sheen is here. Do you wanna just say hi? Hey guys, how's it going? I'm just dropping in to kind of keep an eye on the progress in this. Uh, you, uh, Sheen works with OBOL. If people are familiar, do you want to just give a short intro? Yeah, absolutely. So OBOL is one of the teams working on distributed validator technology. And specifically, we're making um, a middleware client that sits on top of validator clients and makes them highly available. So you can run a number of kind of client combinations together and have a fault tolerant validator client. And um, we're just about to kind of launch test nets and stuff if people are kind of, I don't know, keen to try out new types of validators. Cool. Glad to have you. Cheers. Thanks, Trent. Um, the two things going back through the chat. Well, there's the API. I think we already talked about. Jeff had written some stuff up about that, but there, Carl, you had mentioned doing an alternate queuing system. Do you want to talk about that? Um, just summarize it and where you landed on that. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, as usual, I'm just trying to maximally optimize for someone to write an implementation themselves and to do this as simply as possible. Um, and although I really like where the queuing system has gone, I think we can make it even simpler. Um, so my idea to do this is to uh, have a, uh, an alternative form of queuing that exists at, at some time where we switch from like this this uh, interactive check-in queue to a system where you just you you call the API and it gives you a slot of a longer period of time, and this is for people who want to use their own implementations or people who know they have really slow hardware or trying to do some weird stuff with SGX, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's sort of distinct from what I'm seeing as the, um, the like inter the, the interesting experimental um, uh, contributions. Like that'll be later, and that's more about the ceremony around the randomness and destroying it. This is just for different implementations. Um, in the message I sent, I was proposing saying like maybe every eighth day we do this, but uh, I've like since decided that's that's a little bit ridiculous and makes the UX very hard to. Uh, to come around on so uh, maybe at the towards the end of the uh, general contribution like general public contribution or at the beginning then uh, we should we should have a period like this um, so what that means is it basically looks like a different api for uh, a different api endpoint for the queue where you can just call it and it'll say okay here's the next available slot um, and then you get that does anyone have any thoughts Queries, comments on this. Sorry, can you quickly explain it a bit more? So you you get like basically tickets. What's the what's the difference? Either we lost him or he doesn't realize he's still muted. Sorry, didn't realize I was still muted. Um, <laughs> the uh, the existing system, you have to sort of you check in, 
and then it gives you a new time and you have to check in by that new time. And then once you've done that, it gives you a new time, et cetera, et cetera, uh, until we get into 30 second intervals right before your, your contribution. Um, the idea for this is that if people are taking really long or really short to contribute in the queue in front of you, we can shuffle the queue around a bit to accommodate this and hopefully achieve higher throughput. Um, this is really good for the like general contributions, but I'm a little bit worried about speed. Uh, so I'm a little bit worried about how easy it is to, to implement. So I wanted to offer a separate endpoint where you will apply and it will give you a time. So it will say, um, like, come, come back at 3 p.m. tomorrow and then there's no more checking in you have to do. You just log in at 3 p.m. tomorrow and say, hey, give me the, uh, the letter ceremony. It gives it to you and you have a fixed time length to, to participate. So we sort of switch from this like dynamic queue to a system which is like re reserved time slots. Um, yeah. Okay, and as closer you become to the um, specified point in time, um, the intervals in which the participants are supposed to uh, poll the current uh, state is uh, getting shorter? Uh, that's for the that's for the normal queuing system. Uh, ah, but okay. for my, my alternative queue system, there's like no further check-ins. Mm -hmm. uh, has there been some investigation into something like um, having the participants connect to like a WebSocket endpoint so they do not have to pull, but instead um, the, the coordinator pushes the, I say, let's say um, current, current uh, transcript to them as soon as they are supposed to, uh, yeah. Yeah, so this, this was a bit of, a bit of the discussion I think uh, you've missed in the past and that's if we're trying to move away from this to okay. quote unquote simplify the API. Mm -hmm. um, the like the check-in process is not extremely complicated and it's not aggressive polling. Like it's going to be at the start every few hours and then get down to every 30 seconds. Um, so it's it's nothing the server shouldn't be able to handle. All right. Um, yeah. It just it, it makes it really easy just to 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 to, to be able to use standard um, like HTTP GET requests, right? Um, a little bit easier than a, a web socket. Anything else? Not for me on this point, unless people have any ideas as to whether this is a thing that's necessary. Um, I'm sort of torn on it because it's not actually that complicated to just do the full interactive system. To me, where it it shines is for maybe people who want to have an air gap solution or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it might not be necessary. Yeah, I, think it, uh, I, I like the idea. I think it's um, it'll it'll be easy to um, to switch. And uh, once we're over the initial mad rush, um, there won't be we won't expect long queues. Or, um, so yeah, we get more flexibility and uh, um, and we can cater for all those experimental, more experimental implementations. Sounds good to me. Yeah, um, it's also like, if, if we're running out of time on the implementation front, we can implement this after the system's already gone live. Like we can add this to the other queuing system once we've got the, the primary one out of the door. One question. I have is how the authentication is uh, currently done with the, with the other system. Because if you have this periodic check-ins and you have to re-authenticate for every every check-in, and that's uh, yeah. So it's it's able to um, they'll have a token. The token will be validated on every request. 
but uh, it it'll last for a good length of time. So I don't think it'll need to be renewed. This is just a JWT token, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so currently on the site, you can connect using your Ethereum account. Is there some criteria that uh, have to be fulfilled by that account? So, um, or, or can I just generate more accounts if I like and use them to participate multiple times? Yeah, so um, we're talking about criteria uh, like such as um, nonce greater than or equal to three. Some people have floated other ideas like having a POE app or at least one ETH in the account. So, some reasonable barrier to entry for sure. All right, thanks. I would like to start having a place where we can discuss these these things a bit further. Exactly like what are these contributions? Uh, what are our auth methods? Uh, just for like general general discussion. Um, I've had a, had a few people like back come to me quite worried about what what are and aren't the criteria. So if we could have this in a like easy to access public case, that'd be good. Um, so Jeff, you wrote up some of those those your ideas originally in that that doc. That's 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 pretty good. Uh, but I'd like to like put this into a repo or some other public forum that's a little bit easier for multiple people to contribute to and uh, have discussions about. Um, and also just a place where we can point uh, others towards uh, if they're interested or have ideas on what should should be included in these uh, the door. Sounds like KCG spec repo. To me, I agree. Let's add it. Um, okay. A sub subfolder for, for for API maybe. Um, like yeah. Yeah. Are these? I'm assuming these are people that aren't already attending these calls, so they're more than welcome to join here as well and have that discussion. It seems relevant and we would make space for it. Yes, no, they're, they're, they're welcome on the calls. It's, it's, it's more just that they're like not really wanting to, to fully follow this process, but they just have some opinions of what should be included and I'd like to accommodate them. Uh, also just have a canonical list and to actually have the debates of like, does the non-sql three, five or two kind of thing. And like, just, just, just have this out loud or have this in a easy to follow place. Yeah, no, I think that's great. Uh, the more we can do to open up discussion to people, the earlier, the better. Um, it's part of the reason we have a, uh, a public Discord channel is because we want more people engaged and asking questions and figuring out how they can participate. Because that's going to, yeah, it'll help us in the long run. Uh, and this is something different to what Kev had mentioned last week. He was talking about another... Uh, let me see what he said. Another the repo. With, uh, he was talking about making another repo with rationale type documents. Oh yes, yes. This is this is separate from it. Okay. Uh, one yeah. is sort of understanding the general ethos of the the, 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 the ceremony, and then this the, the, what we were discussing moments ago is like the specifics of how and why you you participate. Got like it. Philo philosophy versus implementation, I guess. Yeah. Um, does anybody know if he worked on that or has an update? Not from my end. Okay. Then I'll just reach out and see. Uh, I'll DM him. Uh, yeah. And then you also mentioned the, the SDK. Is there any update on that? Uh, I've sent some stuff forward and back back with Kev. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out exactly what that looks like, uh, but uh, nothing, nothing, nothing major or helpful there. Um, I mean, what what this actually looks like is basically just like what once once Kev's happy, like Kevin and I are happy. There's I, I guess not too much discussion on this unless Jeff Jeff has any feedback. So um, like it doesn't affect the the wider implementations uh, for now. 
Got it. Um, let me see. Okay, it looks like I'm just going through the things that we said uh, two weeks ago we were going to take care of. So it, you had said final decisions on API. Um, sounds like that had some progress. I don't know if we're at like final, final decisions, but um, you made progress on it, right? Yeah, uh, Jeff, Jeff, uh, the, the, the stuff Jeff did was, was, yeah. was pretty much that. I'd like to now sort of just integrate this into the repo um, and then we can, yeah, in, in, have, have, have them lost, lost, lost few discussion points there, but like, Essentially, I'm I'm pretty happy with with with, with the Jeff's proposal. Awesome. Is making the spec implementable the SDK or is this something else? Nope, that's something separate and something I did not do. Okay, so that'll be on your something you want to try for the next two weeks. Uh, no. I, I, unfortunately, <laughs> I'm a, I, I'm away for the next two weeks. Um, Got it. So oh, I, oh right. Gonna, yeah. yeah. Not not all of it, but enough of it that I can't. I'm not going to make promises about this. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's most everything I had from last week and um, general comments that I saw in the chat or general discussion points. That we can pull forward. There's a uh, 4844. I think that's the right number. The proto dank sharding call on the 29th. But I'm, I'm guessing you're going to be away for that, Carl. So I'll try to join and just provide a small update. Um, but yeah, we've we've gone through everything I had on the list. It sounds like there was definitely some good progress. This test site was really nice to see that we're getting it out. Um, Putting, cobbling together the pieces um, and figure out how it's breaking. It's good to do earlier. Um, Carl, if you, is there any update to the timeline as you see it? Are we still on track? Uh, anything that you're worried about as we're heading towards the audit in September or August? I, I always get this messed up. <laughs> um. Hmm. Uh, I guess okay, the, so it's in, second in, half of second half of uh, August is what we have. Yeah. So uh, I guess that's that's um, the, the 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 limiting factor here is going to be the SDK, um, and that's I guess that like that needs to be fully def like defined and implemented before before then. Mm. Um, like in, in in terms of the actual amount of work that needs to be done there, it's not very much, but it's like there's a bunch of agreement stuff and like small things that need to be sorted. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about the about that. Right, because um, it's basically a little more than two week two weeks away. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that? So I, I, it sounds like you're trying to. Yeah, you you've got a lot of things on your plate at the moment. Um, is there any way we can? Get, is there anyone we can get to help you with the SDK or is this something that you just need to do yourself? Well, <laughs> you're going away for the next two weeks, so. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's my issue, right? Um, hmm, okay, I must, I'm, I'm, I must, I must think about this. Um, we, we, we can chat, we can chat to the sink, uh, but this is a okay. good point. Um, yeah. All right. Maybe. We must do something about this, yes. Um, is there anything else on the agenda we didn't cover? Or sorry, something that's not on the agenda that somebody would like to bring up or something I missed from the agenda? Um, I opened up a discussion with our PSE designers because I figured um, the design thinking could happen in parallel with development and spec development yeah. thing. particularly thinking of things like the dash a dashboard so we can display progress and um uh so the designers our designers got 
in touch spontaneous with, with the ethereum.org designers and they seem to have formed a, a, a team to work on it um but um how, how do we want them to how do we want to get engaged with them going forward uh do we want to should we have them on these calls or, or what's the best way to do it well um this seems something maybe more suited for my non uh cryptography skill set so i'm happy to help here engage with them and provide feedback on the interface stuff like that um yeah definitely at a minimum i'd love to have them engaging in the, the kcg ceremony channel and then yeah they can give updates here as well i don't know what time zone they're in but yeah they're welcome to join here okay um i can i'll uh message you after to get their I, i'm assuming they have a chat somewhere where they're talking and collaborating so we'll just figure out what that they is i have not i have added them to the discord so they're they're present in there These okay the two psc designers are. yeah i think it's let's combine for now and uh, if it if it gets too much of the discussion like we run out of time then we can split up later but uh, yeah for now that, that seems to make sense all right um i think we're kind of tapped out on things to talk about unless there's anything somebody wants to, to bring up yeah so i oh, thought the, I, yeah. no. sorry go ahead Oh, I was just going to say I have a speaking slot at ETH Seoul, uh, and that's early August. I was going to talk about this and, and float a few um, hackathon ideas. Um, cool, yeah. Yeah, there you know. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Please go ahead. Um, like part of my push to keep this so simple is that this really should be doable in, in a hackathon. So yeah, that, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. yeah. The more implementations, the better. Um, so the other point I want to talk about is I, I've been having this discussion with several people on the idea of doing a sort of a pointer back from your, uh, from the transcript to your identity. Right, so the, the 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 standard way you attest is you go on Twitter or your favorite attestation platform, and you say this contribution number twenty seven was me, um, and that's fine. But what happens if someone else claims to also be contribution twenty seven? So my proposal for this is that we could have what well, we can include in the the transcript itself a reference back to some kind of identity for you be that your ens or an address or something like that so the transcript itself would be contain a signature of say callbeak.eth and then i would also claim on twitter or with the transaction that i was contribution 27 and now we have this sort of double back this double link system between the two uh which is which is quite nice um in terms of the actual security model it does not change a thing which is kind of interesting so if you are prepared to trust uh, you trust Marius, and Marius says on Twitter he was contribution number sixty-nine. Then that should be all that you ever need uh, for for the trust model. It doesn't matter what anyone else did, uh, even if, if even if someone else claims to have the same contribution, they they point to the same one. As long as you trust Marius, then it's okay. Um, so I had mixed feelings on this, and then I'd also add some complexity and add a little bit of space to the the transcript, but. I did the math on it, then that's, that, that's not too complicated. Um, but I've subsequently decided against this idea, um, primarily because we've decided to do the, uh, the load, uh, sorry, the, um, the subgroup checks after the contribution. Um, and this would have to be done before you can do the subgroup checks, which would mean then that the con contribution would contain a signature of, uh, say, callbeat.eth, before you've done the, the low degree checks, which makes it harder to like deny that that was an acceptable contribution. So I'd like this idea less and less now. I don't know if I explained everything well enough. 
Was this your optimistic evaluation or is it something else? Yeah, so the optimistic evaluation is the sort of the reason why I don't think this could work. Um, that's an idea that like hasn't been done in any ceremony before. And as I said, like doesn't add anything from a actual security standpoint, but this double linked idea does add a bit more like authenticity to, to, to contributions that we would see. It would like help people trust that I think if you, if you could see these, these double links, even if like statistically attribute. But it would also make attributions attributable. Yes, I mean it, it would be purely optional, right? You could you could still contribute without. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it. I think it adds complexity without adding anything worthwhile. Yes. Um, so the 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 complexity itself is is basically free, uh, because you already like it's it would be a BLS signature, and this is all over BLS the BLS curves anyway. And a signature is just one multiplication. Um, so the only quote unquote addition to that you would need is the hash to curve, which for like if you're using someone else's BLS library will already come included. But if you're running your own library, which actually should be pretty doable, then this is quite a bit of overhead. So that's, I guess, another, another point against it. Okay, so I'm gonna then like, yeah. I was just gonna say, is there a write up or something that we're, we can see all the arguments for and against this? Just I mean, I, I, uh, I, I think issue number one on the specs repo refers to this. One of the low numbers, like one or two, uh, refers to this, and uh, like it does, it does, it 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 does before the optimistic idea, so. Um, it, it, it doesn't include that argument against it, but uh, it should be there. Um, but I think more, more the reason I'm raising this is I want to say that I'm, I've, I've sort of gone back on this being a reasonable idea in the first place. And so just for the public record, I think we should, we should stop doing this, this, this idea. Got it. Okay. Uh, that's it from from my side in terms of the new new points of interest. Anybody else? Any other topics? Okay, I think we can probably end early this week. Um, just we can end with what people plan to work on over the next two weeks. Um, obviously, the audit is coming up, and Carl is going to be away for part of that, so we'll figure that out. Um, Jeff, what do you want to get done in the next two weeks? Um, try and make some progress on uh, the, the the issues with computation. There's failing cases. Uh, I, I think my next two weeks are going to be fairly uh, busy. I'll be traveling in about a week. Um, so I'm not sure there'll be too much other progress. But Nico is, is, is working on, on issues and I've been converting, you know, assembling a list of GitHub issues for him to work on. So there'll be some progress there. Great. Um, is there anybody that you, I, I mean, Vitalik was in the chat talking about some of the participant ID strategies. Is there anybody that you feel you'd like to have review these strategies before we move forward or like engage in the discussion? Oh, no. So I'll, 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 um, I'll put those into a, a repo as Carl suggested and um, yeah, then people can contribute in there. Okay, yeah, perfect. So I think that, 
that's the main thing is it's not necessarily that the specific people that we need to, to contribute to. We just need to have, have the discussions in public, uh, make sure enough people have had, had the opportunity to voice their opinions on this um, and then decide on exactly what is the list of, of methods here. Okay, yeah, I can, that's definitely useful to have them uh, in a repo that everyone can see. And will that be all of your, so I think you have like three Notion pages. Are you going to move all three of those to uh, a repo? Yeah. Okay, awesome. All right. Uh, anything else, Jeff, or is that it? No. Okay. Uh, on my side, we probably have some paperwork we need to do relative to the audit. Um, I'm going to try to interface with the designers that are getting up to speed, <clears throat> see if we can start sketching out some ideas and just figure out how they're going to integrate with the process. Um, and I guess those are, yeah, those are the two main things that I'll be doing over the next two weeks relative to this. Uh, I don't know if we mentioned it, but yeah, we're also trying to, there's a chance we might do, um, assuming everything goes well, we might do a live contribution at DevCon. So I've been talking with the organizers about what that would look like, how much time we would need, uh, things like that. Just making sure they're aware of what this project is and trying to see if we can get a, get a slot on the main stage during kickoff. Um, I think that would be really great for awareness and getting people to engage in the project. Maybe I already mentioned that. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree. That's 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 awesome. Yeah, the way we're thinking of doing it is uh, well. It, it depends on what the the random inputs are and how that's figured in. But um, something like taking a picture of the the main hall, and then that's the that's the randomness input. Yeah, I think no matter what we end up doing, it's not going to be actually a very meaningfully secure contribution, but it's more <laughs> just for the, the fun and ceremony of it. Um, that's cool too, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're, we're not pretending this is the, the, the be all and end all. And uh, yeah, we can try. We can, yeah. All right, um, we can probably wrap here. I will connect with Kev, um, and just see what he was up to for the uh, since the last meeting. And then, um, yeah. And one thing I mentioned to Carl and maybe also on the last call is that uh, ideally we start to have, I mean, last week was good, but we wanna make sure we're having discussions in public, moving stuff to a repo is also really good. But the more discussions we can have in that public discord channel, the better for people who, jump in a month or two from now and are trying to catch up. Uh, yeah, these, these are all good steps forward, but we just need to make sure that any discussions that we're having are try to try to default to public just because it's, it's easier for everybody to catch up when the time comes. All right, um, unless anybody wants to jump in, interrupt me, we can wrap here. Thank you everybody for, this is the fourth call, I think. Thanks for joining the fourth ceremony call. Uh, this early planning stuff is crucial to, you know, making the ceremony work at all and in long term, the proto dang sharding and things, other constructions like that. So it's important work. Um, it might feel like a, like a, just another biweekly meeting, um, but this is, this is really crucial stuff. So thank you. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Take Take care. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks all. Cheers. Just look.